welcome to the new Preach Gaming HQ, baby! <laughs> Drink it in! We are doing drama time for the very, very first time from the brand new head offices of Reach Gaming, baby. Oh, it feels good! It feels good to be sat here for the first time doing this with you guys. It really fucking does. It's been an extraordinary period of time moving our ass over here. We've slowly but surely done it. We have got Mr. Chris in the office. Hello! Hello! We don't have a Mr. Nups yet! But it will arrive. Let's have a look-see. Let's have a look-see for the drama viewers. There it is. This is our wonderful office. I love it so much. This Well, this is the stream room. This is one of the many rooms in our brand new place. You can see we've got the Bulwark representing. We've got Mr. Boom. We've got Illidan. We've got Sylvanas. We've got Half-Life. We've got Lady Maria. We've got all that good shit. And a PS5 sort of sneakily showing its face in the side corner. We've, we've got that going on there. We have no Final Fantasy XIV stuff or Final Fantasy stuff in general yet. We, we have got a Que. We've got Alpha, who's chilling over here. We have got Alpha, but that's it. That's all I've got so far to uh, show its place in this world. Uh, but there is apparently a fat cat on its way. Yeah, fat cat is apparently coming some way, somehow is apparently coming to come and spend its time with us so we'll see how that goes when it gets there boko <laughs> boko we are lack of big daddy i am trying to justify the purchase of a five thousand euro seven foot two big daddy but it seems like it's just not a worthwhile expense uh considering we you know we, we spent a thousand pounds on lights this week <laughs> but you know things like that things like that it is a colorful couch it's a cheapy couch cover that my wife decided our nasty looking free leather couch was not suitable <laughs> she didn't like it <laughs> she didn't like it uh gotta put it in the window scare at the crows there's nowhere to even put such a thing there's nowhere to even put such a thing other than the very top of our stairs uh, that leads up to the offices. Uh, we could just put a giant big daddy just staring down at everybody so that they know when they get here that they're in for trouble. I, I imagine somebody would try and steal it, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how they would even get it out of the building. The cover is A+. plus. It was a nightmare putting that thing together. It was. It was an absolute goddamn nightmare getting that thing on there. I, I washed my hands of it and left Emma and Chris to it. They could sort it out. I was doing nothing with that cover whatsoever. But we won't be like this for drama for long. We do expect to have a new scene because Mr. Chris, for our drama fans out there, Mr. Chris is working on a system where you guys, certainly in the live audience, sorry YouTube friends, love you completely, but uh, we'll be able to influence things happening during the show in the background uh, with uh, red alerts and sexy times and things like that, where you guys will be able to interact with the show live as it's happening uh, and have some fun with it. So Mr. Chris is currently working on that. That will be something we want to add to the show later on. So of course you matter. This, uh, we don't, look, none of this exists without you guys. <laughs> none of this, none of this. Our current project, because I know YouTube, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've not had any videos for a while. Trust me, it's not through lack of work <laughs> by any means whatsoever. Uh, we've put in many late nights this week, but we're almost there. We're almost there in the, being able to do what we can do. Uh, so it's been super fun. We've also had an extraordinary week. Uh, I have now utterly demolished my long track record of not crying at video games uh, by crying, I think, six times or five times at Final Fantasy XIV's. In particular, Shadowbringers story arc, which is still yet to be finished. Um, it was pretty emotionally devastating, I'll be honest with you. Emotionally devastating. And we've not finished it yet, but I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. Because it was uh, far too much. It was far too much. And by the end of the series of MSQ that we kind of pushed out... Uh, I was I couldn't even remember half of it. I was like emotion. I was emotionally damaged. Let's put it that way. I was emotionally damaged. Even after doing all these drama stories for so long... It wrecked me. Endwalker soon, probably when I get back from Mexico. Uh, so we're currently playing through FF7, because one of the biggest bummers I've had in Final Fantasy XIV is not getting any of the references. They're not needed, but they do add to the experience, and I have never played any of the other FF games. Uh, so we're currently playing through some of them. So uh, we're doing Final Fantasy VII right now, and I just found the gold saucer, and my character is now poor. I'm not even trying to be funny. We spent all our money doing chocobo racing. Uh, but... <laughs> 
and we didn't win a single time. Uh, but <laughs> that's that's the way it's got to be. We're actually broke. <laughs> We're actually completely broke. Uh, but we'll we'll make it work somehow. We'll we'll live with our consequences. Our, our addictions will make sense. Uh, at some point, I'm sure it'll all come together. Uh, lost house to Gamba. We did lose our. We, we've lost our shirt and everything, so it's uh, it's a thing. But uh, my game plan is this: I am going to Mexico in a couple of weeks, just for a few days. Um, it's vacation. Um, certainly, me and my family have wanted to do for like three years because of obviously COVID. So I'll be in Mexico for a few days, uh, getting some sun. I'm very pale and uh, doing all those things. And then we plan to get into Endwalker when we get back. So we'll be looking to finish up the Shadowbringers just before uh, we're going up, uh, going away. So that's the game plan. That's the game plan. We'll finish Shadowbringers leading up to my trip to Mexico and hit Endwalker when we come back. That is the plan. But that's not why you're here today. Is it? No, it's not. You're here because around the world, every single person who plays an online game is aware of the horrors of dealing with the anonymous people in the world. So please get your stories in. Uh, I know Bex is running a little short because she vets them, so she would love to get your stories in. So if you've been thinking of writing one for a while, please get it in uh, so Bex can have a, a good look over it and see what's going on. So you get them to drama at preachgaming.com uh, or on our website to get your stories told and shared with the world. So, having said that, uh, I have several stories in front of me right now. Uh, huh. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's start with the sussy elf. The sussy elf. Sus. The sus elf. The sussy elf. And for this tale of suspected elf treachery, we are going to need... Mr. Hogstrom, welcome aboard. Mr. Hogstrom, our wonderful website supporters. Zero. And Soul Nibbler. The Soul Nibbler. Okay. Sus, apparently. The Sus Elf. No clues there as to what this story might be about. I don't know. But let's have some fun with it anyway. <clears throat> Hello, all of you in the Preach community. I must confess to you. I'm not a long-time viewer of yours. I always knew you were there. Somewhere, thanks to Mr. Bald himself. So I assume that's novel then. But I only started watching your content when you joined in with some Final Fantasy. And with that, I discovered Drama Time. So I thought I will contribute to your show with my tale. Now, also excuse my grammar. English is not my native language. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's my job to read them. You just, you just give me the general gist and I'll sort it out from there. Don't worry about it. So today... I would like to tell you a little tale from Final Fantasy XIV. About a year old now as I write this. It involves my good friend Hogstrom, who I can only describe as a genocidal maniac meets superior com superiority complex wrapped around an elf girl fetish bag. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's a member of my guild then. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. <laughs> there are more words I can describe him, but stupid and humble are not any of them. Sounds elitist. Elitist. Me and my friend Hogstrom used to play Warcraft 3, when all the stories of every video game began. <laughs> and Wrath of the Lich King on private servers, separately, before we met each other, thanks to Planet Side 2. Wow, that takes me back. Fucking Planet Side 2. Jesus Christ. God, I had so much hope for that game, and it was so boring. I was so bored during that game. All the way back in 2012. I was 14. And he was 15. Through our student lives, we used to jump from game to game. Mainly RTSs, but not really sticking to anything long term. We don't exactly come from secure positions financially. Especially me being from the Czech Republic and Hogstrom from Slovakia. Where between us, we could afford a mud hut. I mean... <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> if we go halvesies, we can get a mud hut. <laughs> and gaming isn't that widely accepted. And there was a general feeling in our local communities that if you were a gamer past the age of 16, you were a creeper. I mean... Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you're the kind of freak to rename the characters in Final Fantasy VII like a fucking animal. Like an absolute animal. Explaining our parents with post-communist boomer mindsets 
that paying monthly for a game is not an internet scam. <laughs> Just as futile endeavor as convincing a world first raider that lore of World of Warcraft is cool. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> so let's fast forward a few years then. <clears throat> BFA has arrived. With money no longer being a problem at this point, we decided we should return. We should go back to World of Warcraft. And we left the moment we re reached Endgame. And it dawned on me how Azerite armor works. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's go forward again then to the start of the pandemic. I joined my friend in a Discord call one day asking him if he wants to play something together. He replied that he was just trying this MMO that his ex-girlfriend recommended to him. He thought it was a little girly, but why not? I asked if he'd stream it and sure there it was in all its glory. What I saw on my Discord stream was a here Thaumaturge level 4 running around Uldar aimlessly. I didn't find the game ugly. Contradictory even, I thought the game looked good. And to this day, I have no idea what people are talking about when they refer to this game as Weeby. I mean... You do, right? I mean, I do. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> Let's not pretend. <laughs> the UI, sure, it left more to be desired, but being highly customizable excused how it looked for me. As with any game before I try it, I do a little bit of research. I started looking at the classes, and there was... Ooh, what's the pick? He's doing some... Okay, let's put the context to this. We've got an ex-WoW player from Wrath of the Lich King, uh, and is doing his research on the classes. So what job is he choosing? Ooh, yeah, I mean, it was instantly picked. It was instantly picked. And there it was, in all its glory, my boy, the Dark Knight. <laughs> Which I went on and referred to, and still call it to this day, as the Chad Knight. <sighs> the job could only be unlocked by reaching Ishgard in the first expansion, which I didn't mind. So I rolled a male Ora warrior. My friend, as mentioned, rolled Black Mage Ellison, due to nobody's surprise. What is that supposed to mean? I'm a Black Mage. Patch 5.2. Which one's that one? What's 5.2? Hel any helpers? What's 5.2? I don't know the patch context, because I get it all in a row, because I'm, I'm a slacker. Yeah, it's part of Shadowbringers, but which one? Before 5.3. <laughs> ah, yes. Patch 5.3 of the Shadowbringers. The grape picking patch. And that's all I remember it. That's all I remember of patch 5.3. It was the grape picking patch. It was a wonderful one. It was awesome. It was so... The star showers. Yes, the star showers. So patch 5.2 rolled around sometime before that. Before the Great Exodus. What's the Great Exodus? I assume that means from WoW, or was there a Great Exodus from FF14? Do I not know about this? Everyone leaving WoW. Okay, it doesn't mention WoW, but it just says the Great Exodus, so I assume it's when people left WoW. And soon after, we started playing the pain of the early game of FF14. To be honest with you, all of, it, all of you, it was not for my determination and love of edgy pirate armor wearing classes. I would not be writing this tale today because the only thing getting us through a realm reborn was my desire for the Dark Knight and Hogstrom's desire to have bigger explosions. Really? I, I liked a realm reborn. Fast forward yet again then, and I reached level 49 and with it, the infamous Cape Westwind. On this session, however, I was alone, and when I hit that join button, the queue bar was showing a mere 41 minutes of wait time. Is there queues in Final Fantasy XIV? <laughs> Streamer privilege. <laughs> this can't be right, I thought. There's no way me, a tank, waits 41 minutes for a trial. 
So I ventured to one place where I'm bound to get help. To the wretched hive of scum and villainy. I went to Limsa Lamincer's Etherite Plaza. Even I had heard how great and lovely the Final Fantasy community is. So I thought I'm going to do it, my friends. I'm going to try and talk to people in local chat. <coughs> Hello? Can someone help me clear Cape Westwind? <laughs> My stupid sprout ass yelled in shout in the city that day. Within seconds, I got several whispers. Naturally, I picked the first one and politely declined the rest. I got invited to the group and surely there was standing below me, poking my thigh, a cute tiny cat girl. So tiny, in fact, I overlook her at first, above my, t my huge aura. Ciro was her name. She blasted through Ritterton in a second. Slam! He was dead. We chatted for a while after that. How I liked the game and whatnot, and with a slash smile and slash hug, she sent me on my journey. I did what I had been told is appropriate for Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> <clears throat> after she gave me a slash smile, and a slash hug. I did slash pet as a goodbye. She stopped. She turned and she replied with a custom emote. Zero purrs. This would be a sign of things to come. Going forward again, me and Hogstrom have finished the MSQ. We have recovered from the trauma of the 5.0 ending. In the meantime, we had found a chill free company we could call home. And now it was time to raid and experience what Endgame was all about. At this time, the second raid tier of Shadowbringers was well on its way. Hogstrom didn't join me on this thanks to his raiding anxiety, so I was on my own. The edgy Chad Knight walking a lonely road that only I have ever known, with my living shadow literally beside me. I pug a few runs, but in weeks I was not able to kill the first boss. I was stuck in what you would call Party Finder Hell. The problem was the game itself. You see, when a new raid tier comes out and you don't clear the first boss in the first week, you're stuck. You're stuck in hell. For eternity. Since the people who have already killed the boss can set up reclear parties and not allow newbies to join. In Final Fantasy? That would never happen, right? That would never happen. In any MMO. It's you don't have to do it first week, otherwise you end up stuck forever. That doesn't make sense. In World of Warcraft's fantastical community, Every week, there is groups that are taking newbies to bosses they haven't killed before. And they ask regularly. They say, is there anybody who hasn't yet done Sire Denathrius Heroic? And would you like to join us and we will help you out? God bless the World of Warcraft community. God bless. It will only cost you 200 euros. So what to do? <clears throat> what do we do? You're forced to spam practice parties and hope for a lucky kill. And there she was. Ciro. Like an angel, she descended, standing in the middle of Limsa, with a farming party icon next to her name, where my sprout icon used to be. I clicked on her, and to my surprise, it was an advertisement. Her static was recruiting. They needed a tank. I, of course, am a mighty Chad Knight and offered myself to her and join. And she rejoiced as it was some time since we'd seen each other. Look at you, she said, all grown up, no longer a sprout. I was surprised she remembered me and thought nothing of this obviously just friendly banter. I eventually joined her static and was invited to their Discord, and to my surprise, it was their free company Discord, not just for eight people, but for the entire free company of 70 plus members. One of the rooms, however, 
I found special. It was the selfie channel, occupied by a spam of selfies. Surprisingly, most of them were from Ciro. They all had little Instagram-style quotes underneath them. This is what two months of quarantine does to you. Or just got out of the shower, smiley face. <laughs> I know I always send pictures to my guild when I get out. I can't say that. I literally sent pictures of me in the bath <laughs> to my guild. Just feet pics, though. Nothing creepy. Nothing creepy. <clears throat> to my surprise, Ciro was actually a woman. And was running a static with her boyfriend. <sighs> Bummer. During our raid nights, these two used to flirt with each other, calling each other little pet names. I don't want to bother you with details, but let's just say my humble self outgrew my fellow raiders and found myself having more luck actually pugging savages than raiding with them. Oh dear. <laughs> oh god. Is it a cesspool guild? Nightmare. <laughs> I find myself guilty for this, so you don't need to judge me, chat. <laughs> but I straight up left them stuck on the first Savage boss. By the time patch 5.4 rolls around, and with it our lord and saviour, Yoshi, blessed our game with more housing districts. Knowing this, our free company decided to try and grab a house. We were successful, but you won't believe who got to buy a 40 million gill mansion next to us. Zero and her boyfriend, of course. Can't say they were particularly thrilled to see me again, but we decided to tolerate each other. Several weeks later, I logged in and lord and behold, in front of Zero's house stood a tall elf sprout lass with ashen hair named Soul Nibbler. This would be the meat of our story. Close to her, next to the market board, was my free company leader just crafting things. I proceeded to slap him and told him there is a free company of sprout right in front of him. Why are you not recruiting this person? With haste, I approached the clueless being and struck a com conversation. She told me that she was visiting a friend and was just looking around at people's houses. It took almost no persuasion for her to join our free company. So this poor level 21 marauder joined our flock. Over the next week, she grew particularly close to me and Hogstrom, always throwing a whisper when one of us logged in, doing some normal leveling content, but there was something strange about her chat. For a level barely above 20, she played the game with a lot of efficiency. In dungeons, she was always running ahead, knowing what to do when we confronted her. She just told us, Oh, it's not, it's nothing. I just watched a lot of guys. We just shrugged and moved on. One hangout, I noticed that her gear is really below her current level, so I offered to craft her for free, of course. Anything for a fellow free company member. She had to log out, so I sent it to her main box and DM'd her Discord. She'll find it there, to which she replied with a message that's hard to forget. Oh, thanks a lot. Is there anything I could do for you in return? And I do literally mean anything. This unsettled me. It came out of nowhere. There was no real hint of it. So I thought I'd just reply with something simple. It's just a favor. Let's just say you owe me some time. Over the next few days, she flirted with me randomly, even trying to sit on my lap during our free company meeting at our free company house. But rescue came in the most unexpected form as she witnessed Honkstrom roasting the fuck out of Lalafels, male cats and Hrothgars, explaining that people only played them because they were furries in Limsa. <laughs> Where we annu <laughs> we hardly sated our thirst and hatred of basic ERPers in Limsa. <clears throat> she seemed to like it. Eventually, she started to fall for him and move away from me. And suddenly, all of the problems I was having with her sitting on the lap and the Discord messages became his. He didn't mind, though. Being a ladies' man, he has become, a f he's become fond of her. And what was happening between them at the time, we'll never know. 
Eventually, I was told they exchanged selfies and such, but from what Hogstrom told me, her description seemed familiar. I asked if he could send me the picture. For science, of course. I just want to confirm my suspicion. And sure as shit, there it was. It was Ciro, fresh out of the shower. Suddenly, everything made sense and fell into place. Why I found her where I found her. How she was so skilled while being just a young little sprouter. She was playing us like a fiddle. But why? To what end? What was the point? While we realized that she was just raiding on her main, the cat girl, I decided to my better judgment to just tell her we knew who she was. So the next day I saw her online just leveling in Gridania as Soul Nibbler. She was just in a cutscene and I was patiently waiting behind her like Hawk looming and thinking that I will say, what will I say waiting for her to finish the cutscene she was watching? When she finished the cutscene, she saw me. She gave me a slash wave. To which I replied with, How was your raid yesterday then, mate? Eh? How was your raid? Long silence was my answer. Surprisingly, she denied my allegations on the spot, but she knew something was up since even Hogstrom had become distant with her. She kept the story up for a few more days, with her lies before telling everything to Hogstrom. Long story short, Soul Nibbler was her dedicated ERP character for her boyfriend. Ooh. <laughs> wait, 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 what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> she needs an ERP character for her boyfriend. What's that about? <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> what kind of relationship? Maybe it's a long distance relationship. It could be. It could be a long distance relationship. Maybe because we assume when somebody's like a boyfriend that they're together. Well, maybe they're not. <clears throat> And when I invited her to our free company, she wanted to use this character to get me, but somewhere along the way, she had decided to ERP with Hogstrom as well. Not only that, but it came to our knowledge. This wasn't the first time. Zero has multiple alts, not only on Light and Chaos, but also on Crystal and Primal. God only knows how many people she was playing with. We don't know how far the tentacles of Ciro spread, or whether or not her boyfriend enjoys watching her ERP with other people. But she still does it to this day. I'm pretty sure she plays 24 hours. We see her log on, log off, re-log, then come back later. It might not be the most engaging story you've ever had on drama, but I suggest to all of you, no matter which server you're on, if you see a girl posting some selfies on your Discord, of just getting out of the shower. Watch out, because it might be Ciro, and you don't know if the boyfriend might be watching as well. I mean, do you care? I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> that the people would care. I don't. I really, genuinely don't think that people would care. <laughs> a good horror story? Oh, let's get us in the mood for our house competition. Who cares? It's not like it's real. Why would you want your girlfriend to have an ERP character for you? When you could do it IRL? Huh. 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 <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <sighs> I'm certainly not asking Emma if she wants to do that. I'm certainly not doing that, no. That'll, that'll be a no for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that for sure. Okay, according to Bex, we don't need a name for this one. The Haunted Orc. Okay, are we going with the horror theme, Bex? Is this in, in, have you done a horror theme of stories because we've got the horror house coming up? <clears throat> okay, cat girls aren't in IRL, which is a good thing, right? You guys know that, right? That's a good thing. Yeah? Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, you don't want half human, half cats. You don't want that. 
Uh, you, do you really want to see your potential partner pissing in a box on the floor? Or do you just want only the good bits? You don't like furry butts? No. No, I don't. Or corgi butts or whatever it was that we had in drama time a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> the haunted way. You think you do, but you don't. I can't imagine it being good. All right. <clears throat> the, the haunted orc. All right, let's go with this. Preach and Bex. I have a confession to make to you and the audience. I am still playing World of Warcraft. But it gets worse. I am one of the 10 people who are still playing World of Warcraft Classic Season of Mastery. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Double two times two. Guilty. <laughs> Judgment has been rendered by the chat immediately. Immediate judgment. <clears throat> I wish to share with you my tale. The other night, I flew into Orgrimmar on my warlock. I had just finished a class quest and was heading home to turn it in. I jumped off the flight tower, ran down the drag, and turned left into the cleft of shadow. The quest giver was an orc. He stood in a tent near the ragefire chasm portal. I ran up and clicked on him. Lokta, he said, playing the normal male orc sound effect. But no quest window appeared. Oh god, were you getting roleplayed by a player who was pretending to be the quest man? <clears throat> Please tell me that's what happened and you spent ages there. <laughs> Please tell me you were just clicking on a guy. <laughs> I clicked again. Lokta, he repeated. Still no quest window. I waited a sec in case it was lag. No good. So I clicked him again. Lokta! I took a step back from the tent. There was the golden question mark. This was definitely the guy. So I clicked on him again. Lokta! He said. I started spam clicking probably a dozen times, and every click was met with a Lokta and nothing else. Clearly, something wasn't right. I decided to give this orc a minute alone to sort himself out, so I jogged back up the ramps, headed towards the auction house to browse the 20 or so items in total that it would contain. Is the auction house actually dead? Anybody got WoW Classic? Is the auction house empty? Lokta! Oh no! <laughs> Lokta! Said a voice beside, behind me. <clears throat> what the fuck? <laughs> I stopped and turned around. There was the orc. Out of position and looking right at me. And I'm not going to lie to you, it actually gave me the willies. Okay, I thought, running on. I was up the drag when once again, locked up. <laughs> what in the fuck, man? This orc had followed me again. He was up in the middle of the road near the leatherworking shop and he was still staring right at me. Locked up, he said. I walked up to him, and I had started doing circles around him. He stayed perfectly still, like any other NPC. Just wildly out of place. And I'm not joking, he had the golden question mark above him. I clicked him. Loctar. No quest window. Eventually I moved on. This time I got as far as the deserted auction house bank area, when there it was again. Lokta! There he was. Right by the letterbox. My stomach felt weird seeing this happen. I'd been playing World of Warcraft for over a decade, and I had never seen anything like this. Glaring at me with his spooky orc face. I felt he could actually see me. Lokta! He repeated. That was enough. I decided I'm just going to go away. So I ran up the tower and caught a bat to ratchet. This made things worse. All through the flight, all I could hear was Lokta, Lokta, Lokta. I was starting to think this must be my imagination. 
It started to sound like it was getting deeper, slower, more menacing, and somehow more familiar. The horror climaxed when I landed in Ratchet. The Orc was waiting for me. And he had changed. He was the size of Golomag. Bleeding red eyes, tangled hair. And the moment I landed, he grabbed my little warlock and held it to my whole screen. It was filled with his face. He looked right into my right real life eyes and bellowed Loktar. <laughs> really, Bex? <laughs> of course, that's when I woke up. But why am I sending you this to drama time, Mike? Because I'd actually peed myself a bit in bed. Dude. You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus fucking Christ, bro. What the fuck? Oh, no. Oh, guilty, guilty. That's a triple guilty. That's triple guilty. What made it worse is my wife was snoring next to me, deeply into my ear, which I think is what set me off on the lock tar. Your wife snoring made you piss the bed. That's your tale. That's your tale that you're sharing with the world. Is that your wife snoring made you piss the bed. Oh no. His wife is an orc. <laughs> your wife's an orc. <laughs> zug zug. If you're listening, go to her now and just give her the zug zug. Plausible? It's a possible tale to go along with it. It's my wife's fault. Yeah, that's it. It's my wife's fault. Oh, sweet Jesus. It's my wife's fault. Oh, God. Well, you know, just don't share that story with anybody who knows you. Oh, Bex. Okay. All right, it's time for true horror, friends. It's time for true horror. Strap in. Strap in. It's time for true horror. <clears throat> this better be good, Bex. That's all I'm saying. This better be good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. A ball, yeah, as he's awake. <laughs> as he's awake, straight away. Oh, there's no names for this. Okay. <clears throat> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. Okay. It's not you? Okay. Oh, there's one name needed. Hold on. Oh, there is one name. Yeah. Fixed. All right, sorted. <coughs> sorted. There we go. It takes me all day. I'm sorry you have to go through this. <laughs> so you have to go through this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I furry, sure. <clears throat> Hello, preacher. I'm another new viewer. Hello. My friends told me about Drama Time last month, and I have binged three years of Drama Times already. Wow. I love your stuff, and Methuselah is the MVP. This is why you picked this story, isn't it, Bex? Because it gave you a little pat on the back. The ego. The ego. But you're putting us all through this because you got a little pat on the back on the intro. Well, son of a bitch. Based? Okay, yeah. Don't you manipulate the staff, all right, when you write your stories. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. And Chris and Nups are the best and Emma's amazing. Don't you do that. Let me tell you my story. This, st this story shouldn't need names, but you can add one if you want to. As it's entirely just about me plus whoever I'm dating at the time. Oh, you're the fairy. Okay. I'm sure my chat will be nice to you. 100%. I'm sure of it. I'm sure your audience is already slamming the guilty gavels because I'm a fairy. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I have to say, I do not disagree. Many are complete degenerates, and not in good ways. Okay. I first started playing World of Warcraft in vanilla. My brother got- Not playing Final Fantasy? Really? Okay. 
I st- first started playing WoW in vanilla. My brother got me into the beta, and I was enamored with the game just by watching him when he'd let me. The drama, however, all began in the Burning Crusade. Given how immensely poor my family was, I could not continue to be subbed to regular World of Warcraft. My father was blind, my mother was suicidal. Oh, sorry, dude. We're all on benefits, so I had to play a private server. I don't remember how I found it, or what it was called, but none of that really matters. I was traveling through Westfall as a max level paladin, though I cannot remember why. I simply remember seeing someone with a feminine name talking in general chat, asking for help. (laughs) Me. (laughs) Me. 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 I'll help. I'll help. I'll help. Feminine name needs help. Me. Me. I'll do it. I'll do it. What do you need? What do you need? Being a dumb 18 year old virgin, I naturally jumped to their aid and carried them through the quest they were stuck on. We got to talking and bonded over a lot of shared interests. She was two years older and from California, I'm from England, and we begun spending hours every day talking and quickly, we were in a long distance relationship. This is gonna be the other side of uh, Cezo's story, or Cero's story, right? This is, Cer- this is Cero's tale. I would stay up until 4 a.m. or later every single night so that I could spend any amount of time with her. Probably only within days of meeting her, we were a couple. She sent me nudes, and I was, of course, entirely enchanted. She was so gregarious and outspoken and friendly, and I was the opposite of all those things. I had a lot of learned behavior from my mother. I was self-loathing. I couldn't talk to new people in person. I was terrified of everyone. I dropped out of college because I couldn't stand people simply perceiving my existence. She opened me up to many parts of the world and the internet, one of which was the furry community. She liked it. She was into it. And so has her immensely inexperienced e-boyfriend. Well, I had to. If she liked it, I liked it. And so I threw myself into it unabashedly and with full vigor. We used to sit in this game called IMVU. All right, I'll do this. I'll do it. I'll do it. IMVU game. It's a three. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's a 3D avatar chat game. Oh, it looks like uh, VR chat. Okay. Yeah, all right. It It looks a bit like The Sims. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I can show this. I can show this. This is fine. I, I thought it was going to be worse. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I expected worse. Okay, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Yeah, it looks like it's got discos. It, it looks a bit like uh, The Sims, almost, I guess, for our audio listeners. There definitely appears to be some uh, modeling problems. Uh <laughs> <laughs> there definitely seems to be an issue with the female models uh, in terms of their uh, the size of uh, certain aspects of their bodies. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> it is what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Where are we? <laughs> so we used to sit on this game called IMVU. With furry avatars, of course. Cybering in rooms that had sexual poses. Some even had animated sexual poses. It was was amazing. (laughs) This was my life. For months. Private World of Warcraft servers. Furry chat rooms. And cybering. Side note. To anybody out there listening to this. I do not recommend any virgins... Learn their initial sex behavior from furries. That's good advice. Or pornography. (laughs) Or pornography. If you're a virgin, do not attempt to rail your first partner (laughs) like upside down backwards while standing on a head or anything. Right? Just don't take that. Just go go natural. Go natural. Try and go in blind if you can. Think of it as blind progress. You'll be much better off. Believe me. All right? Just just trust me on this one, okay? (laughs) Just trust me on this. All this time... I had been on Job Seeker's allowance and looking for my very first job. It took me six months to finally get one, but it involved me moving to a hotel in the countryside and being a live-in waiter. Ooh, like The Shining? 
My job as a living waiter. Truly, it was the most hellish job I've had to this day. I had no car, so I couldn't get away. And a taxi would have been very expensive due to being in the middle of nowhere. My colleagues were frankly complete assholes, and my bosses were egomani egomaniacal twats. Which, why are chefs such cunts? Hey, we got a lot of chefs who watch the show. They're awesome. But it was all worth it, because I got paid mad dollars. I earned £9 an hour, and as much overtime as I wanted back in 2008. That's good. That's good money back then. And I had zero bills because all my living expenses were included. It only took me three months to save up enough money to go all the way to California to meet my girl on our one year anniversary. Naturally, the day I got that paycheck, I quit and left. Because at this point, I, th I, I thought I was 19. 19 year olds are still stupid without thinking ahead. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> instantly just quit and just was like peace i'm going to california bye i was so excited and nervous i was weeks away from meeting the love of why didn't you work up until you actually went the fuck you left when you bought the ticket not when you were leaving why don't you stay and earn spending money the fuck even even at 19 you should have that much foresight right <sighs> I was weeks away from meeting the love of my life. When the day came, everything went swimmingly. No flight delays, no flight concerns, no terrible people around me on the flight, so I easily slept almost the entire journey. When I landed and gathered my bags, I waited in that public area. I don't know what's next, but if you flew your ass and worked at a hellish job to fly your ass to Canada Fallonia to get catfished, if you seriously seriously flew your ass to california to get catfished <sighs> oh we've had a raid from noble uh we'll be playing ff14 in about seven minutes ish <laughs> ish just stick with us for a minute you'll be fine <clears throat> when i landed and gathered my bags i waited in the public area for her to come find me and i remember crying tears of joy the moment i saw her she was there and she was real i was so shy and so afraid though in my head she represented the thing i wanted most in the world and i won't go into any real detail on the visit but it was amazing she was everything i loved online and more the two weeks i had booked weren't enough so she paid for me to get another flight back three weeks later. Five glorious weeks I got to spend with her. Not bad. Not bad. Things are looking up, lads. Things are looking up. Not bad. Not bad. Stonks, yeah, stonks rising. Invest. Invest. On my journey home, I had a layover in France. During which... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> During which I got a text from her out of the blue saying it was over. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, that hurts. That's fucking cold. That's some cold shit, man. That is ice cold. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. That's really bad. Being in France. Pff, the text message is bad, but imagine. Wow. Fucking stopping in France. Nightmare. The message read, Being together in person was so good that I can't handle going back to long distance. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Naturally, I was distraught and entirely caught off guard. It felt to my dumbass 19-year-old self like I had just lost my reason to live. Oh, One of the things she had given me when I visited her was a necklace. A strange but beautiful black and white dyed stone carved into a maybe eight-pointed star. I wore it religiously from that point onwards for sentimentality. Once I got home, I just tried to go about my day, playing World of Warcraft, hanging out in furry chat rooms, trying to make new friends. 
all the friends I had now were furries. Because all the friends I had, I had met through her. All the circles I existed in in my entire social life were furry circles. Oh, <laughs> sweet Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I had no place else to go, so I just kept indulging in it. I even went to furry meetups. One in Bristol and one in London. Wait, like fur? What was that? Co that was that thing called that the internet historian did a thing on. The furry thing, where they were all like, yeah, you know the one I mean. You've all seen it. A couple of years went by. I had a new furry girlfriend that I met in the chat room. She was from Manchester. I was from Bristol. So we'd see each other as often as we could. Could have walked past her. She could be here right now. I wouldn't know. It's not me. No. I don't know, man. Out of nowhere, my calif- Out of nowhere, though! Azzy from California reached out to me. Azzy had heard about my dad dying and wanted to offer her condolences as she knew how much my dad meant to me. Truly, he was my favorite person in my life and I still struggle with losing him 11 years later. Same, bro. Same. Right there with you. She and I got to talking and she wanted to come clean about everything. <gasps> It turns out the entire year we had been e-dating. She was fucking guys IRL. The necklace she gave me that I still had only ever taken off to shower was a gift one of the guys she cheated on me with had given her and she didn't like it. That's rough. <laughs> That's fucking cold as fuck. Oh, that is harsh. That is rough. Oh my god, that's that's an oof. <laughs> that's an oofus. That's awful. Oh man. God, I'm so lucky. I've never had to go through this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Naturally, as you guys probably imagine, I lost my mind. I threw that necklace out of my window into my neighbor's yards and I hope to never see it again. <sighs> I became a recluse. This obviously made me depressed. So I turned to salvation. Real retail World of Warcraft service on a US account that Californian X had helped me get when we were dating. In good news, being a recluse... <laughs> this is not good news. Don't put it like that. <laughs> Please, I beg of you, don't put it like that. In good news, being a recluse got me good Ulduar progression guilds. <laughs> on the upside, lads. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts. You know how it goes. Swings and roundabouts. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Silver linings, right, Alex? Silver linings. <laughs> we got server second. But only because Ascent, I believe World 13th at the time, were hoarding our server and we couldn't compete with that. We did, however, beat them on killing Algalon, so fuck you, Ascent. <laughs> we were, if memory serves, under 20th in the world for defeating Algalon. I made some very good friends during this time that I still have to this day. And though they're from Florida, I believe they're good people. <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but I fucking love the way you are told this story. Like, I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but I fucking love how this story is written. It's so good. It's so good. <sighs> and I have met them a few times. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I kept playing on the US server that my ex-Californian played, my Californian ex played on. Yeah, I wonder. That's a fucking mystery, isn't it? I, I can't work it out. Can any of you guys work it out why he would continue to do that? It's a fucking mystery. It's a total mystery. But I did. And I saw much drama to do with her through my years playing on that server. You stalked her on that server? At one point, a warlock she had flirted with for help with achievements posted all of her nudes on a public guild forum and she became immediately famous. I felt bad for her, but she was always good at pretending that she didn't care. Things improved for a time. In 2013, I met a girl on Tumblr who was from Louisiana. We fell in love and six months later, I moved to the US and I married her. <laughs> Fuck my life, man. <laughs> oh, no, stop clapping. Stop clapping. I beg of you, stop clapping. Stop clapping. Stop clapping right now. Jesus fucking Christ, stop clapping. <laughs> Please, shh, stop. 
We had four great years, then when she cheated on me, and now we're divorced. <clears throat> <laughs> that was the second. This is like the. This is like the writers of Shadowbringers wrote this drama story. I swear to God. <clears throat> That was the second hardest time of my life. I'm still living in the States, as my green card does not expire until 2028. I feel a bit like I'm stuck in limbo, but at least things are better now than they were. I'm a lot better with people than I used to be, though I'm still not perfect. I have a full-time, easy-at-home job where I can get away with playing a few hours of WoW during my shift. I can tell you I do not consider myself a furry anymore. But sometimes, I feel a pang of wanting to go back there. Because of the friends I had. That ma no, that makes that's nice. Makes sense. He wants the friendship and the camaraderie. A shared interest is a really big deal. Like, I'm not going to say it. But, you know, there's a shared interest, a shared friendship. That's all good. So it feels more like I'm a recovering addict, lol. Mike and chat, thank you for reading my dumb story. Even if it never makes it to air, it has felt oddly cathartic. Maybe even a little therapeutic. To type it out and relive it a little. Well, <laughs> we like, we like, we like, <clears throat> we, nah, nah, fuck me, I need a drink. <laughs> I need a drink. It was a good story. It was full of darkness and misery, but it was a hell of a tale. It was a hell of a tale. And I hope you feel a bit better now. Louisiana, you got all the way. Hope, yeah, I hope you're doing okay. Hope you're doing okay. That is a rough story, but god damn. That's unlucky. The necklace is the worst part for me. The necklace is the worst part for me. It really is. The necklace. That necklace thing is rough. Yeah. <laughs> the necklace is rough. That's that's harsh, man. Got Zogyog zero lights, though. So totally worth. <laughs> it was worth it for all of our progression. My armor penetration levels went right through the roof. It was really quite good. It was really pretty good. Well, that brings us to the end of drama today, but not the end of the stream, my friends. You still got me for a little while yet because we have a competition coming up in about 50 minutes where we're going to be going to custom-made haunted houses in Final Fantasy XIV. In Final Fantasy XIV, we are going to be venturing into the wonderful world of the creativity of people in... Um, people in ff the last time we did a housing competition it was spectacular absolutely spectacular